Ladies and gentlemen, Easy Aces. brother Johnny's plan to trap the crooks who were stealing furs from his wealthy father-in-law's department store, she and Alice, Johnny's wife, did manage to save the furs. The crooks got away just before Johnny and the police arrived, because Jane had unwittingly meddled in the plan to capture them. This episode takes place just before noon the next day, and is in alternate scenes between the Ace's bungalow and Mr. Ace's real estate office. But first to the bungalow, where we find Jane on the telephone. Listen. But, dear, this is the fifth time you've called me up since you went to the office this morning. I've got work to do. I can't be coming to the telephone every... Yes, I'm here. Why do you keep asking me that? What do you mean you're checking up? To see what? If I'm butting into somebody's business... Listen, dear, I hate to get sarcastic, but oh, yes? No, don't you call me up anymore. I've got my housework to... Hello? Hello? Oh, you. Oh, I'm gone, Jen. Hello? <laughs> Don't you mean goodbye? Uh, what? I say I'm going. Oh, Marge. And did I really have this morning off to sleep? I needed it after last night's excitement. I've got to hurry. <laughs> what are you going to do? Stand there holding that phone the rest of the day? Oh, I was talking to Mr. Ace. We got cut off. That's the fifth time he called me up this morning. The fifth time? Why? What's up? That's what I'd like to know. The first time he called, I thought it was awfully sweet, just like he used to call me right after we were married. <laughs> then the second time, I still thought it was kind of sweet. But the third time, and the fourth, and now again. <laughs> oh, stop laughing. I'm mad. Imagine him calling up and saying that. Saying what? What's the matter? Plenty's the matter. Who did he say? Well, what did he say? He just said he was checking up to see if I'm not butting into somebody's business. Now, who does he think oh, I... So that's what he's... Well, right. that has all the earmuffs of a dirty dig, and I'm going to tell him a thing. Oh, oh, he's a little upset over last night. He's upset? Well, what did I do? Well, mostly you crashed in on a pretty well-laid plan to trap a lot of crooked employees over at the Everett Department Store, and you tipped them off before the police arrived. Well, I went there to see that nothing happened to Johnny. Both Alice and I went. I know, Jane, and I understand what your point of view was, but just the same, it didn't work out right. It spoiled all of Johnny's plans. Well, there's no use crying over spoiled milk, and that's no reason he has to keep calling up here and checking me up. Oh, it's just his way to try to show you that you're better off minding your own business. Oh, you're on his side, too, are you? Oh, no, Jane. I mean, everybody's better off minding their own business. Well, if the shoe fits, why don't you wear it? What? You know what I mean. Everybody's better off minding their own business, you say. Oh, I beg your pardon. I guess you're right. I'm going about my business. But after all, you told me all this. I wasn't trying to buy it. Oh, all. I'm sorry I said it, Mark. No, you're right. But it only goes to prove what I just said. We're all better off minding our own business. Go on, Jane. I'll see you tonight. Oh, wait, Mark. You act like you're mad. No, not mad. Just a little hurt that you accused me of butting in. Oh, well, I didn't mean it, honestly, Mark. It's just that I was mad at him for calling me up. He acts like a... Well, like I'm a dummy or something. Oh, yes. But don't you see, Jane, that if you'd stayed out of it, you wouldn't have messed things up. 
If you'll pardon my saying so, you're always messing things up. I won't pardon you for saying it, so don't say it, Marge. I'll get mad again. <laughs> okay, I won't say it. And everybody around here thinks they can do things, and I can't. Well, I'll show them someday. I'll show everybody that well, I, I gotta can. i got to run, Dan. I promised the boss I'd be in there in time to let him go to lunch. Oh, did, did you want to see somebody? I wanted to see Mrs. Ace. Are you Mrs. Ace? No, Mrs. Ace is inside. Jane! Uh, who is it, Marge? Man wants to see you. I've got to hurry. See you at dinner. Goodbye. Mrs. Ace? Yes, uh, what do you want, please? Uh, I'm T.J. Neff. What? Neff, N-E-double-F. Uh, may I come in? Well, uh, what is it about? I've got a lot of housework to do. Uh, I think I have a proposition that we can both profit by. Well, what do you mean? Well, just a minute. Uh, come in and close the door. Get past the doors open. I've got to answer the telephone, Miss Neff. Just a minute. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Ace. Who? And Mr. Who, I don't get the name. Mr. Who? Mr. Ace? Uh, dear, if you're going to keep calling me up. Well, it gets my ghost to have you calling me up every few minutes like this. If you think you're acting smart, you're mistaken. Now, don't start that checking up again. What do you think I am? A dummy? No, I just want to make sure you're not butting into anybody's business, that you're safe at home, and that you're... You're busy doing what? Oh, you can't have anything very important to do. You did your bit last night, didn't you? I mean, there can't be... Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, never mind, girlie. He'll see oh. you without being announced. Hi, you old stick of the mud. Listen, Johnny, this is a business <laughs> office. I'm here on business. Oh, a fine thing to call me in front of that girl out there. <laughs> oh, just a term of affection. Well, don't be so... Up to... And get off of that desk. Sit over there if you have to. Okay, thanks. Well... Guess what? Guess what? Uh, the quintuplets taking a shower? What? Uh, don't tell me. Uh, Indian riding in a V8. <laughs> oh, no. That's like that. This is business. Big business. You in big business. Oh, now, why all this ribbing all the time? Let's forget the past. Come on. What do you say? I've got something on the fire for you. How about burning the hatchet first? Well, I'll just be an honorary pallbearer for the time being. Why, oh, that's I... the spirit. Oh, cigar. Fine. I like these marvelous you smoke. Got a match? Oh, here's one. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, now, this is more like old times, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> you smoking my cigar. <laughs> like yes, indeed. Well, down to business. I've got a proposition for you. No. What? I've got all my money tied up in real estate. You've got a job in your father-in-law's store. Now, why don't you behave and stop asking me to lend you... You see how you jump at conclusions? Now, look, in the first place, I'm not in the store anymore. What? After putting over that deal with those furs, I guess the old man finally woke up to what I can do. Oh, I know we didn't actually catch the guys that were stealing them, but he liked the way I went about it. Told me so this morning. Just got back to town, you know. And did I surprise him? <laughs> well, sir, one thing led to another, and the first thing you know, he popped this proposition on me. What proposition? I thought you'd wake up. Kind of got you going, haven't I? Will you please come to well, the point? Well, to put it briefly as possible, here it is. The old man wants to build the biggest and finest downtown parking place in town. Partly to accommodate customers from the store, and partly as a money-making proposition. A big place with elevators to take the cars up. You know the kind. Well, we've got to have the lot to build it on. And that's where you come in. Oh, I see. Well, <coughs> oh, uh, here, have another light. That cigar seems to have gone out. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, a, a lot, huh? Well, uh, uh, where did you want to build? It's going to be right downtown someplace. That property runs pretty high. Oh, I know it does, but you know the old man's got nothing but money, and as long as he's going to have to buy it anyhow, how about buying it from you, I says to myself. Well, hell, I've always hit it off pretty good with the old man. Sure you have, so I hurry right over to let you in on the ground floor before the old man has anybody else approaching. Oh, say, that is something I could put over quite a deal there if, uh, well, I've got a couple of places on my list. They run pretty high, you know. Oh, that's all right. Expense is no object with C.J. Everett when he starts something. You know that. Yeah, you say uh, nobody else knows about this yet but me. That's just the point. Nobody. I see. Now, if I could keep this quiet for a few days before those other vultures come into the... That's place. the ticket. Well, thanks, Johnny. It was darn white of you to let me in on a deal like this. I... Well, why not? After all, you're my brother-in-law and it's helping Jane as much as you... She'll get a kick out of it, I know. Uh, well, if it's just the same to you, I'd rather not tell her anything about this. Why not? Why not? Hasn't she done enough messing around in other people's business around here? Don't you know that it's... Oh, I get you. Yeah, there's something sure. in that, too. She sure spoiled the party last night. Well, that's just what I mean. Now, this is one thing she can't bother because she doesn't know anything about it. Now, I promise you won't say anything to her, to anybody, not even to Alice. Oh, sure, I understand. That's the way we'll work on it. 
Five hundred dollars? You mean you'll give me five hundred? That's it, five hundred dollars. And you don't have to do very much to earn it either. It ought to be easy. Five hundred? Now, how about it, Mrs. Ace? Does the proposition appeal to you? You mean five hundred dollars? Uh, excuse me, I'm thinking it over. Uh, take your time, Mrs. Ace. Well, how do I know I can make Mr. Everett buy your lot? He's your brother's father-in-law, isn't he? Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter to him particularly which lot he buys, just so he pays a fair price and gets a good location. Now, the lot I have is right down in the middle of the town, just an ideal spot for such a parking building as he figures on putting up. Once again, though, Mrs. Ace, I must ask you that if you do turn down my proposition, that you keep this strictly confidential. I mean the fact that Mr. Everett is even thinking of building anything. I got it just like that myself, uh, strictly on the QT. Uh, somebody in the office, you understand, tipped me off. And I went to right to work on it. Five hundred dollars. I'm still thinking it over. Oh, take your time. Uh, only I'd like to get some action before anybody else gets in on the deal. I picked you out because Mr. Everett's a pretty hard man to do business with. So the first thing that came to my mind is to try to find somebody that can see him personally. And, of course, I remember uh, reading about your brother's marriage to his daughter. But I, I never talked business with him before. Oh, don't put it to him in a business way. Make it on a personal basis. Uh, that is, uh, try to show him that you've got a chance to do a very special favor for a very special friend. Oh, I see what you mean. Five hundred dollars. Yes. Five hundred dollars a day all the papers are signed. I even took the liberty of making out an agreement to that effect. Uh, I have it here, all uh, signed and in order. Here you are. Five hundred dollars. Yes. And you see here that the money will be delivered to you the day Mr. Everett signs on the dotted line. Oh, uh, does he have to sign this? Sign it? Oh, no, no, no. You don't understand, Mrs. A. Well, I don't understand a lot about business. So much the better. You don't have to. Just like I said, make this a personal issue. You don't have to understand business to do that, do you? I don't think so. Why, you'll be able to swing this deal, I'm sure. I will? Of course. I have the utmost confidence in you. Well, I'm glad to hear you have. My husband hasn't got it. He just wants to make sure I stay in the house all day and not do anything else. And you'll take it? Of mm -hmm. course, he's to know nothing about this. Oh, I won't tell him. I'll show him. He doesn't think I can do anything but stay in the house. He's given me an interior complex. I'll do it, Mr. Neff. <laughs>